Augusta National Golf Club opens up with tee olive, a slight dog leg right par four. Off the tee, it's important to just get the ball in the fairway, ideally shaping the shot left to right. The green is extremely undulating, like most at Augusta, and has a very large false front that will cause short approach shots to roll all the way back to the front or even off the front of the green. The safe play is middle of the green. Two putts and take your par. Pink dogwood gets its name from the colorful flowering tree that flanks this dogleg left par five. The preferred shot off the tee is a right to left ball down the left side, avoiding the fairway bunker on the right. With a good drive, the green is reachable in two, but the general rule is to not miss the green on the same side that the flag stick is located. Whether you reach in two or leave a wedge for your third, birdie is a good possibility here at the second. Club selection is going to be crucial here. We've got a downhill lie. Well, they don't get any better than this. Right down the center. Flowering Peach is a classic short par four. What to hit off the tee could depend on where the flag stick is located. Options are to hit something short of the bunkers and leave a full short iron for the approach. Or you can take driver and hit it as far down the fairway as possible, leaving just a flip wedge to the green. For such a short hole, it is a very difficult shot into the green, especially when the flag is front left. Bobby Jones and architect Alistair McKenzie believe the third hole to be nearly perfect in design. Thus, this green has been changed less than any other on the golf course. A great tee shot here, right down the center, and stays in the middle of the fairway, Jim. The first of the par threes, Flowering Crab Apple, has played as the fourth hardest hole over the years. It's a long par three that requires a precise long iron or fairway wood, and is often made difficult by the deceptive wind that plays a big factor. This makes club selection, as with most holes at Augusta National, very critical and more difficult than at other courses. The front hole locations are the hardest to get to because both of the deep bunkers are in play. Birdie here is very tough and extremely rare. That's the 250 marker there, so we can go straight to the flag stick from here. This uphill dogleg left par four is named Magnolia after one of the most prominent trees at Augusta National. The best play is to hit a right to left tee shot down the right side, avoiding the deep fairway bunkers on the left. 
But the fifth hole is really all about the second shot because the green is one of the most difficult on the course with a massive false front that sends balls off in every direction. The right side of the green tends to be the safest play on this hole where making par is a good score. To maintain the proper distance with this uphill lie, I suggest you hit it as hard as you can. Beautiful shot, Jim. Right down the middle. Time to think aggressively. Juniper is a par three that plays from a highly elevated tee. There is also a significant difference in elevation from the green's front to back, which makes the flagstick position very important. There is a large bunker that guards the front of the green, but the green isn't that difficult of a target to hit if you have the right distance. If the flagstick is in the right rear position, though, make sure to not leave the ball short or you will soon find yourself rolling back into the fairway. Campus is a straightaway tight par four that plays slightly downhill off the tee. Most golfers hit driver because of the length and the ideal shot is played to the left center of the fairway. This sets up a second shot to the hole from a level lie. As with many other holes at Augusta National, this hole is all about the approach shot. There's a cluster of bunkers guarding the front and back of the green. The front bunkers are the lesser of the two evils, though, as anything long will present a very tough up and down. Beautiful tee shot. This one should be positioned right in the middle. Yellow Jasmine is an uphill par five. Off the tee, it is fairly open, with the exception of a bunker on the right side of the fairway. You do want to hug the right side, though, as it presents a much easier second shot, especially if you want to try and get home in two. A right to left shot is the best chance to get it close, but missing left leaves a very delicate pitch over the large mounds. If you lay up then, be sure to come in from the right side of the fairway for the best angle. It is one of the more subtle putting surfaces on the course, especially in the front where it's like a bowl and the ball feeds to the hole. All right, we've got the wind at our back on this one. That's a stunning tee shot, just splits the fairway. The last hole on the first nine is a dogleg left par four named Carolina Cherry. The play off the tee is pretty much straight out and as far down the hill as possible to leave the easiest shot into the green. Also, tee shots that are further down the right side offer a better angle, taking the left green side bunkers out of play. The green has a huge false front that encourages approach shots to end up long as anything short will roll right back down the front slope. The green also has three tiers that can act as backstops depending on where the hole is located. Second shot distance control is absolutely crucial here. All right, we've got a downhill lie. I'm thinking we should be aggressive with this one. This tee shot is starting out dead center and it's not moving either way. 
The second nine starts with Camellia, a long downhill par four. This hole has historically played as the most difficult on the course in relation to par. Off the tee, you want to try and drive the ball to the left or center of the fairway, hopefully catching the down slope, which leaves a much shorter approach. The large putting surface slopes right to left quite a bit, so the key is to keep the ball below the hole. Missing left or long will leave you with a slippery, difficult return. All right, we're aiming downhill, so make sure you get the right club. Well, they don't get any better than this, right down the center. Amen Corner begins at number 11, White Dogwood. The tee shot on this long par four plays downhill and offers a left to right shot to set up your approach. For the approach, the clear danger is the pond to the left, but there is also a massive mound in front of the green that prevents you from bouncing the ball onto the putting surface. The green is fairly large in size, but is tough. You can't go long, you can't go left, and if you miss right, it's a very difficult pitch shot. The safest shot is to target the center of the green for all flagstick positions. This tee shot is starting out dead center and it's not moving either way. Named after the shrub, Golden Bell is one of the most famous holes in all of golf. And although this is the shortest par three on the course, it has historically played as the second hardest hole in relation to par. Club selection is very critical on this hole and can be tough with the swirling winds. The key is to pick a club and commit, or else you can find a lot of trouble trying to hit this narrow green that's fronted by Ray's Creek. The middle of the green is a good shot, but if you miss the green, this is one hole where the bunkers might actually be the safer up and down. All right, unfortunately, I got nothing for you here. The swirling winds on this hole could take your shot in any direction. A little off with that shot, and it's found the bunker. The last leg of Amen Corner bears the name of the plant for which Augusta National is most noted, Azalea. This dogleg par five has seen a lot of action over the years. The drive really calls for a right to left shot, and an accurate tee shot to the center of the fairway will allow you to go for the green and two, setting up an eagle opportunity. Those shooting for an eagle will have to contend with the sloped fairway on their second shot, leaving the ball precariously above their feet. A tributary to Ray's Creek winds in front of the green, and behind the putting surface are four bunkers. The green is massive with a number of substantial slopes, and if you catch the right one, the ball can filter towards the hole. This is a true risk-reward hole that provides a lot of excitement on Sunday at the Masters. Number 14 is named Chinese Fir and is the only hole on the course without a single bunker. The fairway slopes pretty severely left to right and should be taken into account when shaping your tee shot. 
As for the approach, it plays to a green with significant contours, which terrace down sharply left to right. The two toughest hole locations are front left and back left. All the greens at Augusta National demand that you place the second shot in the right spot, but that may be more important on this hole than any other. Good smooth backswing, nice change of direction, and a straight tee shot. That sets up his second shot beautifully. Firethorn is a reachable par five that has always provided great masters drama, including Gene Sarazen's shot heard round the world, an astounding double eagle two that led to his victory back in 1935. After a good drive, most players will take advantage of the downhill second shot by going for the green with a long iron, which adds to the excitement of the second nine for both players and patrons during the tournament. The putting surface is fairly shallow, but wide, and is protected by a pond in the front and a bunker on the right. Historically, number 15 plays as the easiest hole on the course and is a definite scoring hole for those willing to take the risk. With an uphill lie like this one, you can show off your muscles. That's a stunning tee shot, just splits the fairway. Red Bud is the last par three on the course. This hole is played entirely over water, and the green is guarded by three bunkers. With the green significantly sloping from right to left, an exacting tee shot is required to have a reasonable birdie opportunity. Club selection is dictated by where the hole is located, especially if the flagstick is located on the front right of the green or the back left. But if the flagstick is on the left, you can use the slope to feed the ball to the hole, a shot guaranteed to add to the excitement. 170 yards of the flag stick, I think. On the green in good shape. Beautiful shot. Number 17, Nandina, might be one of the most demanding driving holes on the course. The ideal line off the tee is over the right edge of the Eisenhower tree on the left. The shorter hitters may have to play for the right of the tree. The green is guarded by two bunkers, front left and right. Depending on the hole location, long is normally the worst spot to be, so a lot of players will end up in the front bunkers. All that weight training is going to pay off on this one. Swing away, buddy. One of the most famous finishing holes in all of golf. Holly, the 18th hole, is an uphill dogleg right par four. The tee shot here plays through a shoot of trees, with the ideal line being off the right edge of the two bunkers at the left elbow. After a drive in the fairway, you're left with an uphill approach to a green with two distinct tiers. The green is guarded by two deep bunkers, the front left and on the right. Birdie is a possibility here if you can put your ball on the correct tier, but bogey quickly comes into play with an errant shot. That's why the 18th is such an amazing finishing hole and a perfect showcase for the drama involved with the conclusion of the Masters.
Well, that was a less than stellar attempt, and uh, now they'll play from the second cut.